Welcome to this video about biomechanics where we'll be talking about measuring muscle activity or a technique called electromyography. In previous videos we've seen that muscle is very electrically active and that muscles contract because of the influx of calcium ions into the muscle. So muscle contraction is really the result of moving charges. You may remember from your intro physics class that charges create electric fields and that in the presence of electric fields charges will move. Charges experience a force. There's that classic equation kqq over r squared, the force of on a charge. And so in the presence of an electric field, a force, a charge will move. Now we can use that in a measurement setting um, by using a, a device called an electrode, which we place on the surface of the skin or maybe sometimes inside the muscle to force charge movement or to, to harness the charge movement that results as the result results from the electric field that the muscle generates, the muscle contraction generates. So what we do is we place an electrode on the muscle belly or near the muscle belly. Typically you want your electrode aligned with the muscle belly and there's two sensors that are connected uh, to the EMG and the contraction of the muscle will generate a signal. The electrodes that get used for biomechanics research, these are all examples of electrodes that get used for biomechanics research. Uh, the top two there, the picture, are typically a, disp are a disposable electrode that often get used for um, EKG measurements, which is a very similar technique actually. You're again measuring the electrical po potential due to muscle contraction for an EKG for the heart. For EMG electromyography, you're measuring it for due to a muscle contraction uh, during, due to skeletal muscle. There's also a type of in, uh, needle electrodes or indwelling electrodes that are sometimes used in EMG. And in that case, you take a very fine needle and you insert that needle into the muscle. And this results in a much better signal because you're in the muscle belly that you want. You're less prone to noise and uh, effects from other muscles. But it's obviously a more invasive procedure, a little bit more painful and more complicated to do. Now come with me inside the lab and we'll take a look at what an EMG system looks like. So here's the box where the EMG sensors connect. This is one of the EMG sensors and it plugs into the box. The sensor is on a cable and it collects data when you contract like this. You need a grounding electrode placed on the person. So typically you tape this somewhere on the midsection of, of the body and or if your clothing is tight enough it can just tuck in there and then you feel for the muscle belly and you place the sensor with those two silver circles aligned along the muscle belly. And then you use some sort of strap or tape to wrap the sensor in place so that it stays no matter what you do. I'm uh, making sure to keep clear of the cord that goes on there and uh, making sure that it doesn't inter interfere with the movement of the subject. So it should be very, very snug. Once you've got the sensor in place, you check to make sure that you get good data. So here the subject is flexing, and you can see that as she flexes her biceps muscle, uh, you get a nice signal there, that noisy looking thing. Now we're gonna attach a goniometer. When you are interested in muscle activity as a result, or as angle changes, a uh, goniometer is a way to measure angle, so you can see that this bends with the subject and we're aligning it carefully with the elbow joint, and we'll go ahead and fasten it on there, so this way we get data uh, for angle as a function of time, as well as the electrode, the muscle activity as a function of time. And so this is an electrical goniometer, it's recording a voltage, and that voltage corresponds to angles, so you can see that it flexes there from zero to 90 degrees as the subject does a contraction. Then you can give your subject a weight and you can have them do some contractions. You can have them do a lot of contractions and do a pre post fatigue sort of analysis. You can do things where you take the sensors on and off and put them back on. Um, you can also do other things. So here's a lower leg and notice how the subject is flexing her toe so that you can really feel the tibialis anterior muscle there and then the um, sensor is being placed right on the tibialis anterior muscle belly 
taped down securely and just really snug there, making sure it's aligned carefully. Then you can go ahead and have the subject again toe flex to make sure that you're getting a signal, a good signal on that sensor. If you're gonna do gait analysis, two of the biggest muscles involved are the tibialis anterior and the uh, gastrocnemius, the calf muscle. And so again, the subject is doing a toe raise and uh, the experimenter is palpating the muscle belly of the calf and placing the uh, EMG sensor on the muscle belly of the calf and will tape it in place in preparation for the subject doing a walking trial. So the muscle sensor is taped in place snugly so it's not going anywhere. And then the subject puts the pack on and does some walking, dragging the cord behind her. Then we'll talk about challenges of EMG. Some of the challenges involved with EMG are related to that. Uh, muscles are deep. You can see all the muscles numbered in the arm, numbered here, the radius and the ulna are labeled. And if you were to try and measure the electrical activity of muscle seven or muscle nine using any of the electrodes, channels one through seven that are placed around here, you're gonna have a very difficult time because you don't, there's other muscles in the way. There's other muscles that are being activated potentially as well uh, in that uh, contraction. And so then you're not gonna get a clean picture of what those deeper muscles are doing. You also, as a result of that, get weird things in your EMG signal. So you might get uh, signals like these where you have changes in the dynamic range, differences in the dynamic range due to the muscles, uh, changes in shape over time due to just weirdness and how muscles contract, and then the, finally the overlap of superposition with muscles because you have multiple muscles firing and if they fire at slightly different times, you'll get very different looking patterns in your output signal. There's also a challenge with EMG of crosstalk. If you're using multiple electrodes, sometimes one electrode will pick up the signal being transmitted in another electrode, and that's a process called crosstalk, where you have talk between the electrode wires. And so you can see that in this figure here, where uh, channel C is affecting several of the other channels, in particular channel B. There's not actually a lot going on in channel B. The, uh, leftmost column here is the muscle uh, trigger that's going on or that's happening and the trials 8 and 11 EMG are the signals that are being picked up and you can see that in B there's very little actually happening but there's quite a bit of noise in trial 11 and that's probably actually due to all of the activity in muscle C. So crosstalk is a problem uh, and then there's just the simple challenge of getting the electrode in the same place at the same time. Uh, EMG is notoriously challenging for getting repeatable signals. So here's trials from two different days for the same subject doing the same activity um, with the same person placing the electrodes. And you can see that over time, over the time of course of the activity, especially for the biceps muscle, the triceps muscle, You've got very different patterns, even or very different magnitudes and some different shapes as well. Though your timings are generally the same. So using EMG has a lot of challenges because of those things. Uh, that said, it has a lot of potential for applications as well. There's the potential for using it for rehabilitation analysis, for disease diagnosis, um, and also for assistive control and prosthetics. So there's a lot of really cool things that you could do with EMG, but Implementing it is still an open problem and an ongoing research process. Uh, so with that, I'll see you in the next video.